from it and move on. And you want to talk about me, for example? I went under IA. I said, yes, I did wrong. But it's my punishment, here is your punishment. I served my punishment, and I went on with my life. I don't know what else to say. We're, all, we're human. We're going to make mistakes. But we've got to be willing to say, I made my mistake. I'm going to learn from it. But it was my responsibility. It was my fault. And I admitted that. Does that make sense? Any other things I'm about to let Pam have that a lot of people really don't see? Because it's really all about independence. At the end of the day, we're lions. At least in my church. At the end of the day, we're the lion of our circle. And it's up to us to take care of us. We choose to come together as a group. We have group rules. We have a church constitution that people will abide by. Because we are now proud to make together in a cohesive way. I can't be on the battlefield worrying about Johnny behind me and stabbing me in the back while I'm trying to fight the enemy in front of me. So if I'm going to work in a cohesive group, I'm going to work in pride and make sure everybody's on the same page. As far as what people know in personal life, I don't care. What we do as a group, everybody agrees, everything's talked about before we even do it. Um, in fact, I don't make any decision without going through my clergy first. I'm like, here's what I'm doing, here's my presentation, what do you guys want to do with it? Yay, nay, change this, change that, whatever is a discussion, then we move on. But it has to be agreed by everybody. That makes sense. Thank you, sir. But yeah, at the end of that, no, we are not saying yes. We're done with your because we believe in spiritual ideas. Uh, when they said that uh, if you don't believe in any spiritual ideas, so when we talk about spiritualism, you talk about worship, something like that, that you figure it out. To us, it's a very interesting part of what we're doing because we found that working with Hindu gods and working with Zoroastrian Deva, it creates um, quite different effects on reality than we can work. And we set up a lot of things to follow in both paths. That makes sense. I just think I can't say because this is a piece of paper that I gave you. I think I can't talk about uh, Other than that, uh, we do work with um, gemstones, specifically grid quartz a lot. Uh, Anoshian magic, uh, what Anoshian magic is, and it's basically uh, John D. and Edward Kelly, or scrying of certain types of entities. One entity, especially said Abe, Abe being pale, apparently doesn't understand that. So they assumed that his name was Ave, and at that point it was supposedly that particular demon had talked to them how to design the Inosian keys to call them the four watchtowers. And the four watchtowers are obviously the four watchtowers are obviously the four watchtowers are south, east, and west. No less than the four watchtowers are the four watchtowers. The other aspect that we bring in from the Vedic Hinduism, and specifically Tantra, there's a thing called the Impala. The Impala covers the eight parts of the temples of all the above and the one. So whenever we're working in a virtual world requires us to have that type of power, we use a 4D aspect, specifically on the Rudolf Steiner's find his 4D. That way we're completely encompassed and then we can do what we need to do without having to worry about the other things that we can The spiritual fraction of Rudolf Steiner is actually called the fourth dimension. He explains how geometric shapes keep compounding on themselves. And you specifically get into Judaism, they have a thing called Metatron's cube. You put 13 of those cubes together as one big cube of space. And to them, that represents the conscious mind. So in order for me to make anything, I must think of it first. I have to have the thought of creation. Then in order for me to get the thought of creation, the next thing I have is I have to speak about it. I have to say, I have to make it real by speech. I'm using my imagination, and I'm using my words to make it real. Then I have to do it. I have to do the deed. So that's where your thought, your speech, and your deed come from. And that is how you create magically, physically, and you make your performance. It has to start with thought, it has to come from the speech, and then it has to be done. Now, whether you want to do it because this guy says these paradigms are good, or you want to do it because this guy says it's bad, that's what you do. I'm going to do whatever I think I need to do. Now, if it agrees with this side or agrees with that side, it doesn't matter. That's what I need to do to get the paint done. But is it my job 
as an ordained priest to break people away from the chains of that? Yes. But it doesn't mean that those tools still can't be used in my favor. I'm not actually saying that I won't use order to create more chaos. I'm not saying I won't use more to create chaos for somebody to bring about order in order to get the next step of the plan. That's why you have to be fluid. And one of the main things that we try to teach everybody is how to fluidly switch from one thing to another so that you can think on your feet and you can deal with any problem that comes in front of you so you can continue to work towards your goal. And it's that fluidity. Might be boring. You get it off the food as a cup of water. The elements that are distinct to the Zora live stream, demons are water and earth. Yes, ma'am. There's somebody behind the door? Yep. Well, it's locked. That makes noise. Yeah, I just didn't stand there for a minute. I thought you'd like to know. All right, I see it. That's fine. <clears throat> and then, according to Solar Astrium, there is inspired in air. But what I think is hilarious when you get into Catholicism of the devil is Lucifer, and Lucifer is fire and air. <coughs> so, exactly when that flip flop comes in, where they said that this is that, and that is this, I don't know. So I guess it was that one of the councils, or you hear Christianity saying, that was all fire and purification. Well, of course, the more accurate is that the heaven is all fire and purification. Their whole point of doing this lifelong crap is to be so purified by the fire that they can walk through a lot and it doesn't burn. So that when they go to heaven, they're going to different levels of purification, of fire. That's what you hear about the Christians saying hell is. And so our Hell is a dark, dark chasm. It is so dark that you can't even see the hand in front of your face. It is so dark you can take a knife and cut through the darkness, as I was described. And it stinks so bad that you never get used to the rocks. You never get used to the snake. And there are different levels for different things and there are different punishments. And then when you get into the great Hinduism of being dropped into a pit, they would call hell. There's a separate section of hell for those who work with the other side. But you also see that come back around in Dante's Inferno when they're getting on the river sticks. One book takes these guys to go get tortured, another book just goes off in some other weird direction, and those are the witches who serve the devil. Where are they going? And that's why the thing that Christianity does not bring to the table. They don't tell you the devil took care of himself. They don't tell you that. They want you to be scared. Oh my God, he's going to rape the devil. Actually, from my own personal experience, Yes, it is a very destructive thing. It will do things that will shock you, but it has never once hurt me or any of my family or anybody else. Yes, ma'am. Um, just one of the ones to ask, where does the Christian concept of a lake of fire for hell come from? It's nowhere in the Bible. Does it ever mention hell being a lake of fire? It starts with the Zora tree, and I'm saying the fire for purification. Hell is supposed to be a form of purification for the salt. Where it specifically comes from is a place called Sheol. Sheol is the, Jew, is the Jewish under the land of the dead. Okay? Now, I forget the name of the fire pit, but there was basically a big old nasty fire pit where they burned bodies, they burned trash, and all that stuff. That fire pit, combined with Sheol, is what created the modern Christian concept of hell. So, like a big, nasty, burning trash refuse that ripped the sulfur. And it reaped the brimstone because that's what they were burning. Right. And that's how it evolved. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've like, yeah, always wondered. I've read the Bible just got to a couple of six times and I have yet to find where that comes from. Well, and if you go into the original Bible, okay. yeah, the devil is in existence. Hasatan, the first bounce of Satan, is an angel. Known as the accuser angel. The whole story of Job is all about how this accuser angel and God made this deal that. Let's fuck with this guy to see if he can commit, commit blasphemy. Well, that sounds like a great God I want to worship. <laughs> anyway, so if you go with the Jewish paradigm, which is an actual very thorough model of the Jewish paradigm, good and evil both come. And this is the angel who says, You've done bad. Now you must defend yourself in front of the eyes of God. Who assigned you to do this? So when you see like the Church of Satan specifically, they'll say, well, Satan is a symbol. And it's a symbol based on the concept of Hasatan, where I am the adversary, I am the accuser, 
I am the, the person who goes against you. The other thing about the term autonomy, it does say it's specifically an angel, the other term for Satan is any adversarial king, Babylonia, Syria, Samaria, didn't matter, they were Satan. So Baal, the Lord, he was a Satan. Baal's a mother. He was a Satan. These guys were Satan. So what you're saying is you can call out any go Asia. Those aren't demons. Those were adversarial kings to start with. That King Solomon decided. Right. It's just man. Middle East defense attorneys are called Satan. Yep, that too. <laughs> just adversary. Yep. That's the word. So adversary, accuser, composer, however you want to look at it. And then you see one of the reasons that I bring up the go Asia because a lot of times a lot of influence about the Crowley comes into your cult. Where he was using the Arts Croatia, which is the Lesser Keep Solomon. Also, a lot of people don't know, the Lesser Keep Solomon is also the same working that Muslims would use for the word jinn. Uh, jinn are classified very well, so a lot of what they take away from the Lesser Keep Solomon is how they are going to jinn. Uh, a lot of that has to do with sigil and seal magic, it also has to do with torturing entities, and yaddy, but it all leads back to. These different entities were originally kings that were against Jerusalem. And that's why we consider Goetic demons minor demons. And if you watch the show Supernatural, they tell you anybody who goes to hell eventually becomes a demon natural energy. Okay. I just I didn't prepare a speech because I really didn't think anybody was going to show up, so I'm just going to thank you. Doing fine, man. Thank you. I study religions and you hear holy names I haven't read in 10 years, let alone heard somebody actually pronounce and pronounce correctly. So. Well, one of my problems is, is once I invest in something, I totally invest in it. Like, for example, <laughs> when I invested in Aikido, I invested in all the way for 14 years, a six degree black belt, which means I can go over the river. But now I'm master, I can start from school, I can start all the When I invested in the occult in 2000, it wasn't until 2010 that we even tried. That tells you something. I took my study very seriously. There's a lot of things that I've read that I wish I'd never read. There's a lot of things that was a big trash that just been thrown out. But you got to sift through all the garbage to find the pearls. And once you have the pearls, then you have the power. There's so many threads among all different religions for 15,000 years. And it all leads back to either Hindu or Zoroastrianism, depending on how it works out. And that's the same. On your right hand path of religions, you're right back to Zoroastrianism. On your left hand path of atheistic type religions, like Buddhism, you lead right back to Islam. And that's why we went to the source, and that's why we went to the source. We had a whole lot of convolutions between 600 BC and about 1400 AD when you see the occult being popular in Europe. And a lot of that was because, I don't remember the Pope's name at the time, not all the Talmud, which was a uh, major uh, Jewish mystical book at the time. I don't know why they did not want Torah too, but it was just Talmud. I don't specifically get into Judaism. It's not my thing. It's very boring. I find it a lot like um, a lot like Gnostic workings. They want to do a lot of mental masturbation of shapes and numbers and things like that. I'm not into that kind of stuff. I, I mean, I understand my spiritual geometry and how all that works, but as far as that each Hebrew letter having a specific number and you have to align all these specific numbers with these specific words in order to create a, a perfect spell. That's too much. And unfortunately, that's what you see on the OTO and a lot of other color based systems. I just can't do it. Um, Golden Dawn feel bad about it too. There are many traditions that feel bad about general mental masturbation. I just I can't get that one. It's too much. I'd rather work on the fact that this word holds this symbolic power to the subconscious mind and it creates this effect in reality. That's how we approach the thing. Because if you specifically get into a lot of Carl Jung's studies of man and his symbols, along with how man uses words, and that's taken off like you're looking at Pavlov's dog, and you're looking at other types of psychology that have dealt completely into how to control the mind to manipulate the five things, advertisable psychology, where you find a lot of the powers, a lot of the cult powers of this. It's all based on the influence of the subconscious mind. Whether I'm influencing my own subconscious mind to make a reverb effect in reality or somebody else's subconscious mind. That makes sense. In other words, no matter what fast food restaurant you go into, you're going to see something red. 
Exactly. Actually, it's red and yellow. Red and yellow, yeah. It's supposed to make you hungry. Yeah, red, yellow, and white. Because it represents blood, meat, and bone. Hmm. I thought it's blue. No, it is blue, white, and red. You still got your white and red in. And you see a lot of yellow and blue when it comes to things like seafood. Mm -hmm. Because you want to bring about the concept of yellow for the hunger and then the blue for the sea. And making those correlations. And it doesn't stop with color, it stops with color. how the letters are written. What symbols they're bringing behind the lettering and into the foreground or the background with the colors of letters as well. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, bro. You too. And uh, a lot of like what we do in our ritual, we have specific symbols throughout the ritual chamber to create that effect. Like, for example, I have an old school bird and flag on the walls. That's red, white, and green. You know? And in the middle, there are a lot of evil scimitar and a sunlight. So what, what type of symbology am I charging with that? How am I affecting my congregation so I'm just fine with that type of symbology? We know what red represents. What does green represent? Green represents peace. It represents like nature, being outdoors. Depending on the color green, it can represent breeding. It can represent money. It has the greens on that flag and the type that represents ambition and money. White, what does white represent? White represents purity. White represents that iconic ideal that this is perfect, this is good. So if I think I'm fighting a fight, whether that's supposed to be fought, or I think it's a good fight to do so. What does the line represent? We're already talking about that. The line represents the devil. What does the sword represent? Justice, vengeance, war, fighting. And then what does the sun represent? What is, what is soul? Soul is normally, when you look at deities, a lunar deity versus a solar deity. But if you get into it even further, the sun represents recharging your prana. My main prana generator is right here, the solar plexus. It is the uh, uh, solar plexus chakra, and that's absorbed prana directly to the sun. And every energy is based off of prana. You hear it a lot in the Star Wars, they call it the Force. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about. The Force of the Universe is that the underlying penny, everything has this energy in it, everything has that prana. The source of the prana that recharges a human being and other animals is from the sun. So you're saying, um Advertising has what they call subliminal messaging. Sure, that too. That's all the same as lesser magic, using colors, shapes to manipulate others around you. Mm -hmm. So the Christians were right, the devil was in the TV? Well, they're worse. <laughs> no, think about it. Like, Christians are worse with it. What do they throw up on their wall and say, this is the greatest thing ever? A cross. A person dying on a torture device. And they had everybody believing that this was the greatest sacrifice God ever gave you. What, some criminal dying on a cross? That'd be like me saying today, oh, here's Timothy McVeigh, he died in an electric chair. So now let's pass around someone with this guy dying in an electric chair and he's your savior. Now tell me that ain't the greatest mind fuck the church ever pulled. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't understand how you can take, how you can take a bloody nasty corpse on two pieces of wood and say, this is my savior. But what people don't understand, they don't really care about the dead Jew on the corpse. What they care about is that crossroad. It's that crossroad that they want you to wear over your heart. And they want that crossroad over their heart so you can be possessed by an angel to do what that God wills you to do. And that's the mind fuck. That's where it comes in. You go into any type of magical structure, there's always a crossroad. And the Christians are always wearing their crossroad right over their heart shot. It's actually historically inaccurate. They were not nailed over the crosses. They were tied. They were tied. And in Japan, it was even worse because they crucified people too. They know. Mm -hmm. So their body would pull down on the cross. And they died for some reason. Yep. It's disgusting. But I mean, that was a torture device. I mean, you live in a very barbaric society and you don't do this. This is going to than your adversaries to keep them from attacking you. Exactly. And that's the base human animal. And that's a lot of what we try to bring up people. Deal with your base human animal. 
It is the right hand path religions that want you to deny it. They want you to put it down. And that's why you see them being so twisted.